Hello Grinder School, I'm Colossus and for this video I'm pretty excited as it is something I've been thinking about quite a while. I was actually first planning to do a series on how to win at the micro stakes but then I was thinking I'm only producing like one, two videos each month from Grinder School so if I make like an eight a series of eight videos it's gonna be stretched out over a couple of months and seriously you're pl you guys playing the micros you don't want to wait a couple of months before you know how to beat them so I decided to make one short video in which I explain you guys quickly the Bible of at least my Bible in how to beat the micros and then next week and the week after that we're gonna focus on each detail a little bit more in a live play session or a video review depending on how many hands I I have or I, um, or I need and focus on each point separately but in this video I already wanted to give you guys here this is what you need to know to beat this micro stakes what do I mean with micro stakes usually how oh, this, this, this goes up to 2 and all, 5 and all, 10 and all, 25 and all and these 8 bullet points here are should be like print them out put them on the wall in front of you while you're playing I don't know learn them by heart because this is the stuff how I beat the micro stakes from huh, I've been playing micro stakes since 2010 10 well uh, probably earlier I don't even know it doesn't really even matter well I'm just gonna show you why you guys might actually want to listen to me uh, I have copied uh, this is oh, this is a graph this is not my lifetime graph by a long shot it's only 270,000 hands but this is a decent sample size uh, this is not crushing it I'm not winning with like 20 big blinds per hundred hands this is about winning at f uh, 8 big blinds per hundred hands but that's beating the micro stakes and that's beating them at a nice win rate add some nice rake back or add some nice bonuses there and you'll you'll see your stack uh, or, or your bankroll growing in a very neat uh, nice way so this is if you want this watch these videos uh, and my coming videos if you want to learn how to play like Phil Ivey uh, or whatever these poker pros are and do well don't watch these videos because I'm not gonna tell you how to play uh, like them I'm not gonna tell you how to beat 200 and L um, this is focused on 2 and L, 5 and L, 10 and L, 25 and L uh, probably players, uh, probably you with this style you can also play 50 and L but I would make uh, definitely some um, some modifications to my game but we are not there uh, we are playing 10 and L, 25 and L and uh, so on so we should be adapting our play to these opponents and usually our opponents at the micros aren't the most skilled poker players so if you want this steadily winning line and I'll also give you a quick look at the stats or at least my my stats uh, which uh, shift this these are some basic steps uh, statistics sorry uh, VPIP please uh, pre-flop raise we can uh, get here uh, one money at, sh uh, at showdown aggression factor uh, frequency uh, 3 bet percentage and so on and so on you can take a look at this but all what I want to say here is my VPIP is 2116 my 3 bet is like less than 4% and I'm falling to 3 bets where is it like 80% of the time like mm, almost always like except when I have a, something actually something good uh, with these numbers which aren't like exceptional or like wow uh, this guy is playing 38 35 loose aggressive 3 betting 4 betting uh, 
all this type of stuff. No, I'm not doing that. I'm just playing. I'm, I'm multi tabling. I'm playing f uh, most of the time uh, 12 tables, uh, 6 max, but don't confine this video only to 6 max and the 6 max series because anybody who's playing full ring can definitely use the same points given in this video to play his full ring game uh, I've played full ring myself uh, quite quite a bit actually and done really great actually the game suits me re really well why because my nickname is Nidhi McNitt and full ring is basically outnit your opponents uh, but I don't like full ring as much as I do like 6 max so I do uh, play 6 max a little bit more uh, anyway uh, just to say that uh, this video and these points can uh, either can go for the 6 max games, cash games and full ring games so uh, I haven't mentioned any of these uh, points yet which we will uh, do right now. I've also prepared a couple of uh, review hands which might illustrate a couple of these points. Um, if there's still time left in this video I plan to do maybe a little bit of live play and uh, specifically talk about these different points as they come up. But so enough of the, the chit chats okay how do you beat the micro stakes well eight bullet points first one yeah tight is right that's all I mean that's in like in every poker book out there it's in uh, on every poker site well if you're playing the micro stakes tight isn't right at all tight is perfect you should be tight and I can't stress this enough pre-flop and post-flop because most of you guys already know oh uh, pre-flop I should be tight and my r opening range should be stronger than my uh, opponent's calling range so uh, I should be tight pre-flop and everybody uh, kind of gets this idea and then post-flop these are the micro stick you should be tight either what do I mean with post-flop being tight um, I'll uh, give you a quick example okay here's an example of a hand it's not a perfect example as I said in uh, my next couple of videos I will go into each uh, point more uh, in detail together with some live play but this should already illustrate what I mean by being tight post flop or at least I can explain what I mean by this I have ace king I open on uh, from cutoff um, standard uh, standard standard hand uh, we flop our top pair top kicker I see bet and our opponent calls at this point if my opponent would have raised here when I see that and this opponent is I don't know why the stats are not popping up um, oh I already know just a second okay I got the stats up it's not what I actually expected of the stats um, but anyway I have ace king I open from the cutoff uh, button calls and I think the both blinds fault and we hit top pair and we see that at this point if I get raised by anybody who is not a 51 11 let's say uh, let's say this guy I've we, we, we you know what we gonna I, I can do this I can switch stats don't look at the names let's say the 1916 guy is here and he raises me on this board my hand goes instantly into the muck that's being tight post flop I mean there's nothing good can happen when I get raised here on this flop and my hand can barely improve I know I have a backdoor flush but by the time you get to the backdoor flush uh, by the time you get to the flush uh, all the money already w uh, will be into in, in, in will be in the pot uh, if he raises here on the flop the pot will be this big by sure so this is what I mean by being tight post flop if you're going to put in a lot of money into a pot you better make sure you have the nuts or this or the second nuts but don't put in a lot of money with like top pair type of hands bet and keep on betting as long as I don't give you a reason to fold 
and raising is definitely at the micros a reason to fold. People don't bluff at the micro stakes nearly as often as you think. Our, our, our almost said people don't bluff at the micro stakes, but that's not entirely true. But people definitely don't bluff as nearly as much as you think. Okay, so so far that was a uh, point one. I like soft cushions. What do I mean by this? Well, actually, this. No, let's switch this stats like this. So I have position on um, this guy, Carp and Dolly. Don't look at the names of uh, the actual seats. Just look at my uh, look at the stats. Now this is a soft cushion. I have two nits on the left of me, and I have the target of the table on my right. I cannot reiterate this enough. How often do I see micro stakes players at tables where I'm like, Jesus, why do you even bother playing on these? I know for some card rooms there are n not like 15,000 tables running like on poker stars, but at it is it is a ten and now. You shouldn't be playing on a table with five guys playing 1916. If there isn't one guy who's playing like this on the table, then then either stop, then don't play it. Just switch it out. You're not there to prove that you can beat another 18, 15, 19, 16 grinder. You're there to make money, to build your bankroll, not to beat a 19, 16 guy, which, by the way, you won't. Uh, not with this style uh, that I'm teaching you. Um, so this is what I mean with the soft cushion. Have the right, uh, the left position of the weakest player. So be on the left of the weakest player, or have the weakest player on your right. Okay, next bullet point is bluffing. Oh, n another great thing. Uh, if somebody s says to you, "Oh, you should bluff here," you should answer, "What's that?" Because I never, ever, ever do that. Oh, that's not correct. The only time you do this is when you see that a dry flop. And with a dry flop, I mean the flop comes ace nine deuce. You're holding king queen. You can see that it's like versus anyone. Doesn't matter. Okay, uh, whether the guy is a regular or a fish on an ace nine deuce flop, he either hit the ace or he didn't. And uh, with your king high, you're probably you're not even beating pocket fives. So it's good if your opponent folds. So the only time you should be bluffing is on a C bet on a dry flop. Too often I see people. Oh, I bet here now I turned uh, more equity with a gut shot, so I should double barrel. Then they miss their uh, gut shot on the river. Oh, but now I should continue with my plan and tell a, a story. <sighs> no, you should not. You're just, you're just reiterating something that you heard in a video from a guy playing 200 and L. Uh, who was playing an opponent who actually was thinking about the hand <laughs> and not just watching his card so you shouldn't be three betting three streets for a bluff ever you I, even okay in this in this thing why I think I've did it three times maybe where I actually the, the, like triple barrel bluff maybe three hours and guess what two out of three times it failed I lost a lot of money because people just don't f no swear words don't care okay bet when you have it well no double <laughs> double barrel and that's not even barreling just bet for value on the turn and the river when you have it okay don't go crazy and uh, try to double barrel and stall this type of crap another thing point four here take my three big lines they're for you I'm gonna give you an example. Well, no, let's. Uh, I'm just gonna sh keep showing up and uh, the same hand, and I'm just gonna switch out stats. Okay, the stats are again. Uh, we have the loose opponent. I have the soft cushion. Great. Um, I'm playing tight. Great. Uh, we have a knit on our left. Great. Okay, let's say. Okay, let's say I raise on from the cutoff, but I don't have ace king. I have something like. Uh, five six suited 
which I should be raising and I'm gonna tell you later why I have 5-6 suited I get 3 bet by this guy playing 1916 so I'm gonna cover up because otherwise people might get confused so at least this time now you don't see the names of them anymore so you get 3 bet by Ives P.O.P. on the button after you opened with a hand like 5-6 suited insta muck it is queen offsuit you got 3 bet insta muck it is king hmm depending on gameplay is king is hmm hmm and i'm not gonna say any more about hmm but just to give you uh, the idea that when you get 3 bet let him have your three big blinds. You're not there to beat Ives PUP. You were there to isolate Carpent Dolly, to take it on, to take his money, not Ives PUP money. Of course, when you have aces and Ives PUP three bets you, oh yeah, by the way, yeah. Then you, can for, then you can carry on and start playing, or aces or kings, maybe ace, king, uh, queens. Uh, Jax is already even borderline again, again uh, versus a guy playing 1916. Let's take a look at his three bets. That's he's three betting like, and that's but by the way, that's like most of the guys at 10 and three betting like three percent, one out of 40 times. Do you really think that when you have ace queen there, or even pocket jacks, and he three bets you, that you're gonna be good, or are you so good that you can call and I'll play him post flop? Oh, believe me, you're not. I am not. Nobody is. This guy is 3 betting aces, kings, no matter how you play post flop. He's 3 betting aces, kings, queens, ace, king. No matter how you <laughs> play post flop, you're not gonna, like, instantly, magically turn your pocket jacks into some magical unicorn that beats aces post flop. Or make him fold it. Oh, heaven. <laughs> no, you won't. So fuck that let them let these regulars even if they are um i was going to say uh, the f word even if they are um how you say focusing on you or picking on you because you always fall to your three bets first of all no they're not picking on you because they're too if they were so good they wouldn't be playing 10 and all that's for sure uh, second of all, you don't always get 3 bet by the second guy. It's not because you uh, got 3 bet the previous hand by player X that player Z is now 3 betting you and you should start playing back. No, it's not. So, believe me, by the time by the time that you are able to find out that somebody is picking on you, like, uh, you, by that time you should have stacked the donkey like 3 times, okay? So... Here, give the three big blinds uh, to oh, um, to the regular if he three bets you. Uh, don't go into any pissing wars. Uh, bullet point number five: high cards, low stacks. Well, this is simple. What I mean? Is king? Yeah, that's a great hand. It's not such a great hand. One hundred big blinds deep. I would love to play it. Let's say a carpent dolly. Let's uh, okay. Carpent dolly is here. He has like also hundred big blinds. If I make it three x here and everybody folds and carpent dolly calls, it's isn't great because we're really deep and his king as a hand is gonna be a one pair type of hand usually. Of course, sometimes you will hit a straight or two pairs or trips. Blah 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 blah. But may. This is a typical high card hand, ace king. That's also why you want to get a lot of money in pre flop with ace king because that's where its value is coming from. It's it's a hand that likes uh, that uh, likes small stacks post flop. A hand like six five suited is the other type of hand. This hand likes big stacks post flop because you six five suited you will only play it post flop when you hit something really big like a straight or a flush or trips or two pair something like this so that's a hand that you can play uh, with deep stacks it will get clearer in uh, the next coming videos when I want 
uh, high cards, low stacks, what I exactly mean by this. Uh, but don't underestimate this because I see too many people going too far with hands like ace queen offsuits 120 big blinds deep. Three sums are fun. Point number six. Three sums are fun in the sense that a lot of uh, a lot of I don't mean the yeah I should maybe change this three sums. I think in English it means never mind. What I mean is multi-way pots are easy. Why? Because nobody bluffs in a multi-way pot and neither should you. I will show you a couple of examples. Let me check if I have some right now. Okay, my poker tracker just crashed so I won't be showing any hands but three sums are easy fun. We will talk about that in one of my upcoming videos. And Point seven. Oh, balance. Yes, balance. Well, as you guys might probably know, I use a balance quite often. Uh, I work in a lab and I weigh stuff with a balance. In poker, however, I don't use a balance. I play. I play poker. I play my hands. Are we? Am I balancing? No. At the micro stakes. we don't need to balance and with balance I mean um, the concept of switching up your play with uh, polarizing your hand range um, let's say if we if we sometimes raise as a bluff we should also sometimes raise for value. Basically, it means this. Um, I've I've seen a lot of poker videos in my life. <laughs> a plenty. Uh, I think I've I watch even on grinder school when I'm bored or in my car. I even uh, uh, yeah, in Belgium we have a lot of traffic jams, so I can have a lot of time to watch videos in my car. Um, and. At Grinder School, I have to admit, there were some great instructors like TDA, Carothers, uh, I've watched all of their videos, um, even Killzays, actually, actually even tournament videos I watch, so um, I'm a kind of, a, I just want to learn all, all the time, but honestly, when I see instructors um, talking about, oh, okay, so we have an, uh, sometimes we check here for value so sometimes we should do is uh, check here as a bluff and then raise the turn to balance our check ring range for value and I'm like what the uh, are you f serious I mean uh, I can't even follow sometimes anymore uh, what with this balancing stuff and basically I don't care because people at 10 and 0 don't care people at 25 and 0 don't care uh, if you hit your set bet it that's it so easy and simple if you're bluffing do it on a, a dry flop one time and stop it I'm, I know I know you're not gonna be uh, playing poker the most plus EV way but you're not here to learn the playing poker you're here to make some money uh, and to build your bankroll and by balancing your ranger and doing stuff that you don't even understand what you're doing uh, you're not gonna make a lot of money uh, by that don't get me wrong it's not forbidden to read and learn about balancing your ranges but please don't implement it in your game per se uh, it's useless it's it's not it's it's not necessary uh, you won't gain any more cent with it at the micros uh, on the contrary because sometimes uh, what you will do is oh so I have a set here but usually uh, this is a dry flop that I would bet with my air too so I would bet the same amount with my 
with my set as I do with my air just to make sure that people don't see that I have a set <sighs> seriously this guy playing 5112 doesn't care how much you bet he's looking oh my god I hit top pair ching 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 and he wants uh, he wants to get it all in no matter whether you make it 50 cents or one dollar uh, on your continuation bet so uh, balance that goes out of the window now another thing fairy tales and monsters quite a bit of poker videos are saying okay so whenever you play a hand you should be telling a story I see a lot of people at the micro stakes telling stories but they're not stories they're fairy tales because they're telling crap and it is so obvious when they're telling crap either they if they play a hand in a creative way if anyone at the micros plays a hand in a creative way it's easy they either are selling you crap or they have the other other most nuts like uh, let's say a king seven deuce flop uh, and you call pre flop with king queen cut off raises you're on the button with king queen and flop comes king seven deuce cut off checks to you you bet because I mean king queen I mean, you have top pair, maybe the guy has pocket tens and is willing to call a bet. And then he raises you huh? on the flop, on a king seven deuce, check raising you. That's either complete and other crap or he just hit like pocket sevens, pocket, what is it, what, what did I say, pocket two, he, he either hit a, hit a set or something or he's telling you some bullshit how uh, will you know whether he has a set well most of the time I call his flop race if he was telling you some other crap most of the time these guys uh, shut down uh, or they make some weird type of bet that's also thing because then it's also something typical at the micro stick it's just fun to tell you guys this then they check they check raise you on the flop then the board gets a little bit more coordinate like a second suit comes there and suddenly on the turn they bet like BAM huge because they say whoa no 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 you are not gonna suck out on me I just hit my set and then you know okay the guy has hit his set now he's afraid to uh, get the like a, a flush get there and they bet hugely first they see that you uh, the check raise you small to try to lure you in then they say oh oh this board is getting coordinated better bet big and it's usually when when they're telling a fairy tale it goes like this they check raise you smallish and then the board gets coordinated and they make another small bet like and you you, you like 99 percent of the time this is crap because people hate getting sucked out on the micros so what they do is then uh, they, they, they see the board gets more coordinated so if they have a strong hand they will bet big if they were like selling you some bullshit they will bet small, try to like, oh my god, he didn't fall to my check raise. Maybe I should like bluff again, but I don't want to spend too much money on it. So let's just make a small. And by that time, you know that your top pair, top kicker, or your top pair, second best kicker is probably good. And you can safely call and uh, see what the river brings. So, so far, the eight. In very short to eight points because fairy tales and monster it's also a concept that we carry to ourselves if you're playing a hand you should should be telling you a story this is not as important at, at the micro stakes but still people can see that when uh, you don't bet a very drawy flop they will know that you don't hit your set because that's something very basic uh, everybody is betting his value hands on a draw uh, on a drawy flop. So be be transparent in those type of plays, and then definitely don't do like uh, okay. I 
uh, I didn't I hit second pair so I will check here and then bet a, a safe turn card and then because uh, people people will call you down then with top pair because you're not telling a credible story okay so I don't know what to say about these eight points anymore at this point I suggest that um, if you want to look at my stats you can rewind the video I suggest we have some 20 minutes left maybe uh, we can do a really short live play but definitely keep this these eight points are like the Bible at least for me that's how I beat the micro stakes so uh, learn them learn them by heart uh, uh, and follow them and you will be getting uh, results uh, instantly I didn't want to make like a long winded series of videos then people have to subscribe for another month or two more months at Grinder School it will be it's definitely worth it by the way <laughs> not I'm not saying this because there's some great video content out there but I already wanted to give you these points so you can have a start of point so okay from now on I will play 5 and L and I will keep all these points that Colossus mentioned in the back of my head at all times okay so uh, let's quickly fire up maybe for 20 minutes some tables see how I do it oh maybe that's also interesting to see okay okay so if you look at bullet point number two I like soft cushions what I mean by this is we want weak players now look I have a green tag here okay so that's a weak play I know that's a weak player so I'm gonna be on that waiting list now for purposes of this video oh look this is a great table too why is this a great table because I see a guy playing here five dollars I have somebody here with a stack of eight dollars those are people who are probably not the best type of regulars here somebody uh, somebody with four dollars is usually somebody who is like they can still be tight uh, being uh, like short stacking um, I'm looking for people with like unusual uh, like this eight dollars usually that's not a sign of somebody is good five dollars uh, is a sign uh, let's take quickly do this and I'm like I'm doing this the whole time okay so I'm gonna sit here why because I saw somebody with like every all seats have been taken okay damn it uh, okay never mind but I saw this Evgeny one Kim this Asian guy well at least he has an Asian picture uh, I wanted to sit on this table because of him oh we've got a table open oh it's actually the table oh and it's great no I wanna sit here yeah that's perfect oh this is perfect okay why is it perfect because we are on the left of the weakest player at the table probably the weakest player at the table I haven't played a hand against him yet but I'm already tagging him in green why am I doing this um, tagging because I play 12 tables uh, minimum at the same time and I'm all uh, sometimes tables change and when I see that there's a table with that, without with no green player on I'm off it sometimes I even go off it if I have tables popping up everywhere and I can't follow the action and the only green guy on a table is sitting to my left I might go off it because you don't you really want a weaker player on your right it's not it's not like a drama when the guy is on your left but I mean make your life easy and there's plenty of tables running uh, definitely at the bigger card rooms that you should uh, have these guys uh, at your uh, table by the way I know this is not the most sexy poker stuff on uh, table selecting <laughs> I only have half an hour to play I'm not gonna spend it uh, trying to sit at some tables well uh, if you only have an hour half an hour of play uh, you want you you will be building your bankroll for a very very long time at the micros because uh, it takes time and there's no other way to do it okay so here we have one table up let's um, continue out our search to our search for donkeys or for fish I should say fish 
Okay, no. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We have a f uh, somebody with a five. We have somebody I think green. Oh, look, they're all great table. Five dollars, three dollars, two dollars. This is free money. This is a free money table. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna continue like. Oh, this again a great table. Oh, by the way, we are Sunday, so I guess tables will be pretty good nowadays. I'm gonna pause the video, and I'll be back if I have uh, a little bit more tables up. Uh, how do I? Pause this crap here. Um, mm, oh, there it is. Hey guys, <coughs> I'm back. We have. Uh, I haven't been playing anything at these tables. Oh, I know. He got stacked. You see the fish that where I was sitting to got just stacked. That's unfortunate, but it already proves my theory. These are the targets at your table because they're gonna lose their money so quickly. They'll lose their money before you can say, "All in." So we should actually uh, find a new table for this one and let's quickly analyze whether we have soft cushions. Oh, okay. So we have another table. I will uh, sit on that one. Oh yeah, because there's a green tag there. That's great. Uh, oh yeah, that's another. I'm gonna race here. Uh, this is for next video. Oh, Colossus, why are we only min raising from the small blinds? Because people play like idiot post flop, and we hit our sets. Oh, Colossus, you shouldn't. Be, you should be balancing here, and it's because sometimes you will check fault. Is, so to balance, no, we should not. We should bet our set. Why? Because that's what Colossus does, and he makes money. <gasps> we get raised. Now we can slow play because we have the board crushed. I mean. Uh, I can just call here. That's not a good card. And it just got a lot worse. And oh my god, this is horrible in a video call. What did you do? Uh, I'm just gonna check it. And if he bets, I'm actually falling. Uh, because he's not bluffing here. Uh, he's got an ace X. This. Two, three, four, five. This is horrible. The word just ran ran out. Horrible. There's nothing we can do. Mm. Could have re-raised uh, on the flop, but that's um, that's pushing. Uh, that's really pushing it. So we uh, should be just be falling here. That's unfortunate. That's a. That's a, by the way. That's the worst river cart. <laughs> There's only one. River card that bad, and uh, it just came off. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the focus of this video. Uh, I'm sorry that my tables are overlapping. Oh, here, oh, you can have my three big blinds. I was getting off this table anyway. Um, that's that bullet point on table number one. On table number four, we have no, we're not gonna be uh, three betting anyone. And here we are seabedding a very dry flop. We do it with our air. Oh, look at this. Colossus is being balanced. This table goes out. This table goes in because there's a donkey in there. Well, a fish. Sorry, I should stop. I should stop saying donkey. We have um, pocket trees. Who knows? Maybe we'll hit the set again. No, we don't. Okay. So, let's relax a little bit. Oh, this guy checked to us on a king-10 flop. So either he has nothing or he's gonna be playing it really um, really creative and when people play creative we already know what they have. But I have to take a step here with my uh, pocket threes. It's obligatory. Uh, you will get so many folds when people don't see that king-high flops. Uh, I'm really surprised. I mean, I don't know why he doesn't see that there. He should be see winning like almost 100% of the time. Uh, pocket nines. I'm just gonna be set mine. No three bet. No, no three bet. We're trying to keep the pot small, pre-flop and even on the flop, and then when actually we hitting big. Uh, well, when we really are sure that we have the best hand, a lot of money will go in. Okay, on table number four, I'm sh pretty sure I have the best hand since you checked like instantly. On table number five, I am uh, c-betting because I have top pair. 
we have uh, some nice draws if I get raised here I'm not like jumping uh, in on my seat not at all uh, that's uh, wait a minute let's raise here well it's a kind of loose queen ten suited but it's fine uh blah 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 only one question here oh I'm not okay there's a lot of stuff going on wow okay um just see betting here no slow playing obviously and here I'm doing a check call we get raised again uh, by the donkey I'm shipping in here on table number um, and check calling probably uh, I think I'll check call there because I'm not gonna get called by a lot worse I'm gonna call with a pocket unless this is going all in he insta calls and we are ahead, but he sucks out on us. That's okay. Um, and here I'm just gonna call. Oh, I'm gonna call there. That's nice. And here I'm just gonna call because the only hand that beat me is King X, uh, basically. And he's probably bluffing uh, quite a bit here since I did uh, check the. To check the river, so we have an obligatory call here. If you hit the king, well, fine. But we let him open for so many bluffs. I mean, a stand, yeah, great. That's why we check. Okay, there. The, in this, in this last two minutes, so much happened. Um, first of all, hey, again, okay, the donkey actually had something here, but a lot of times he's gonna have some huge crap uh, but this is why we sit at the table because we can easily uh, stack these type of guys unfortunately I'm uh, by the way I'm running way below EV for the entire year so I should be my my win rate should be even bigger than eight big blinds uh, per hundred but whatever uh, you will see that in a lot of my videos I, I can't win a flip for even if my life depends on it but okay a lot of stuff happened and a lot of stuff will happen in my next upcoming videos again here table number four I don't care that I get like squeezed here oh king tan suited I don't even care any about this table table number three you know what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna sit out because it's crappy table nine ten off suits mmm the only thing I w I'm, I'm thinking about is calling here because I have position on this uh, this guy will probably come along um, 53 16 and I can play the hand but it's not nine if it were suited okay nine ten off suit no I'm falling it's not good enough um, you see the donkey calls you, you basically already know what the fish is always going but uh, today we were scanning uh, a little bit of tables. This guy seems like a fish, it also not fully stacked. Playing 80 40 after five hands. I'm gonna tag him green for now. Bah, I don't like table number three. There were all nits like 9 0, 15 11, 27 27. Insta sit out and join another table. Ace 10 offsuit. Ah, <gasps> Colossus! Don't, don't. Yeah, I'm falling. Because it sucks. It's a crappy hand under the gun. I'm gonna tag this guy green. Uh, seems a little bit too playing a little bit too many hands and not being fully stacked. Okay, and on table number two, blah, what a stupid table this is. Oh, this is interesting. This guy makes it 5x from under the gun playing 45-27. Oh, it's the guy that... Um, I'm actually gonna play his queen suited here. That's pretty uh, good hand. On this f uh, board, if you see that, I'm done. Yeah, okay. When he bets like 1... Okay, wow. I can't believe I, I lost with my set versus that guy in the first hand <laughs> of this video. Uh, I'm not falling for one uh, cent. And ace three suited. 
But this is the problem on table number one. This donkey here is uh, has position on me, so this is going to greatly interfere with my plans. Uh, unfortunately, I should have already stacked him, but I mean, the poker gods don't like me. It's kind of funny that uh, this guy makes it 5x pre-flop. Now, it doesn't see that the 5 3 deuce flop, so I, I'm kind of discounting that he has like any pocket pair, pocket sixes through pocket aces. Now, let's take this. Uh, although I'm gonna close out the video, it's been running for quite a while. Um, this guy is getting a green tag 2 on table number 1, min raising from under the gun. I timed out, so he's probably gonna make a bet with any two cars, but I'm falling. Um, with ace high, uh, it's close though, um, because I can't put him like on pocket sixes through pocket aces, because that uh, would have definitely uh, seabed. Uh, he didn't bet on the king uh, board, and maybe he hit the nine, but. Um, bet for value. 40 cents. He might call with ace high. If I get raised by the way on this river uh, I'm still falling. He calls and he shows ace high probably. Yep. Easy game. And I'm not doing anything, I'm just waiting until I hit the absolute, absolute nuts. And then I'm getting the money in. Yes, when I hit the set versus that guy, I slow played it on the flop. And you see what happened. Uh, I slowed it on the flop because it was a set on a 9 5 deuce flop. So, and he, re I mean, he was definitely bluffing. Unfortunately, the turn was worse and the river. The turn was bad and the river was. Yeah. Complete crap. King Queen suited. Mm. Off suit, I would fold it. Yes, I would fold it. Uh, suited, I'm now um, willing to play it. I'm just checking how long this video has been running. It's been running quite a while, so I'm gonna actually quit it. Um, I know live play wasn't huge, but in my next upcoming videos, I will focus. I will run through the blood points quickly, then focus, um, give real life examples, give examples where uh, I played already. Um, uh, by the way, I'm just check falling here on table number two because I mean that's what I do. Uh, on table number one, pocket kings. Interesting because they have two really crappy players uh, in the blind. But I can't, I can't call here. Let these two guys come along, and uh, I mean, cr create a multi-weight pot um, like that. Just gonna make it 120 here. Um, quite big. Uh, I don't care. Um, and with Queen Jack, seeing that I'm getting like, wow, this guy even calls. That's crap, because now the other guys will also call, uh, which makes it pretty bad for me. I'm calling here because on table number 3, because it's just like 10 cents for uh, to see the flop with Queen Jack. And on this flop, obviously we're not getting anything. Uh, oh, it's good that they both folded. Okay, hopefully we can get our money back. At this point, um, if he has a jack, he's never falling. So, let's just bet 250 and then the pot will be 5, 7. Yeah, that's enough to get the money in on the turn. Oh, unfortunately, he falls, but that's, that's okay. I mean, how it goes maybe we'll set him again okay but anyway I'm gonna sit out I'm gonna run through all the bullet points now we get three bet uh, since this guy is 100% of the time getting stacked uh, when I hit my set and we are a little bit deeper uh, I am going to call uh, usually I fold versus regular well, uh, pocket with pocket pairs but this guy just is uh, is a fish, so uh, if I hit, um, it's gonna be great. We miss, and uh, we fall to his uh, C bet. He only bet 70 cents, but uh, really, 
uh, this guy has only three bullets like once uh, so I believe him and I can easily fold my hands okay so I wanna end god damn you know what I will just play out these uh, my blinds here and then we can uh, close out the video come on uh, six, seven, eight. That's not a super duper flop. Oh come on! Seriously. Um. Uh, I'm thinking about this one. He's fifteen, eleven. He's really tight. I don't really hate getting raised. I'm actually gonna check this one back. If he checks to me again. Then Queen, this is a very loose open on table number three. Um, I wasn't really paying attention. I should be falling. I should only be opening ten Queen here if one of uh, if one of these bad pl uh, players in the blinds are really bad, but they're not. Uh, I'm gonna bet here now with Ace King if he call um, because there's one general uh, population read when people check flops to you and um, you check the flop and they check the turn to you they have nothing you can bet like any two cards okay so all the tables are closed that's good we can take a one more look okay being tight having the right position don't bluff don't get into pissing wards with regulars High cards mean uh, don't like deep stacks. Three sums are easy because multiway everybody plays straightforward. Balancing, pfft, like yeah, right. And please, if you do uh, tell a story, don't make sh make sure it's not a fairy tale. Um, when people are creative, usually it's a fairy tale or it's a monster. Okay, but uh, this was Colossal for Grinder School. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you'll be crushing the micro stakes in no time and I'll see you guys in the forums. By the way, we, I'm going to be more active in the forums again. Um, I think uh, I kind of neglected you guys a little bit uh, in, that, uh, in that area. So, uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.